Good afternoon, everybody. Mark Strickland, Building Security Associates, Off-Grid Preppers. We got some supervisors coming here to check on me on this video so you can get him in here. There he is. That's Tank the Tomcat. So I am being properly supervised. All right. All right, this video here is going to be about uh, trip wires. The last one we did was trip wires for urban. This is going to be trip wires if you're out here like me uh, and your backdrop and looks like this. Uh, we're in a pretty rural area of uh, Western North Carolina. Uh, I'm out here today and spin you around real quick. I'm punching in a road. We're putting in a planting area, and this road's going to be coming in from that little white strip behind us, which is another small road. You're going to be coming in this way here. And uh, going in behind me, uh, keep going down that way, we're going to put in a planting area down there, uh, which we've got to do some uh, retaining wall work, uh, get the planting area put in. So we want to get that done before spring gets here so we can uh, make uh, some more planting for a uh, uh, small garden area up here a little bit closer to the house. Okay, uh, last video or one or two I did, I uh, had some people question my background, why I'm, I'm talking about this stuff. Uh, legitimate questions. Hey, uh, I, I guess I didn't go to it deep enough, so I want to go and get that out of the way for everybody. Uh, 12 years in the Navy, uh, I was an EOD guy, explosive ordnance disposal, highly trained in dealing with uh, weapons, uh, explosives, how to disarm, arm stuff. Uh, also in that was uh, extensive training in dealing with chemical and biological weapons, how to de decontaminate, deal with the ordnance side of it, uh, de get it decontaminated and package it up for shipping. So yeah, I got a pretty good background in dealing with that. Did another 20 years in doing security work. Uh, six of that was uh, contracting overseas uh, with diplomatic security, going around the world, uh, teaching and training uh, the local guards, doing security stuff at our embassies. Uh, shirt I'm wearing here, this is the one I picked up in Beirut, one of my trips. Uh, lovely country. I actually, I really mean I had a great time there. I love the place. Just super nice people. Uh, really interesting getting in there. I've flown into the airport a few times. I also made the drive from, when I was in Damascus, drove from Damascus down in, down through the Baca Valley into Lebanon and down to downtown Be Beirut. Uh, like I said, that, that's a really interesting drive. You ever get a chance to do that one? Uh, maybe kind of hard right now with the conditions going on in Syria. But uh, yeah, I, all through the Middle East, mostly in Africa. So yeah, I, I've been to the, most of my time was spent in the third world. You know, I did that for six years. Yeah, so, you know, out for, three or four weeks, back home for two weeks, another set of passports, clean clothes, back on a plane, gone again. You know, six years of doing that, just kind of, you know, 12 years in the Navy, six years doing that, so why on today, it's time to come home. So, uh, so I, I spent the rest of my time in DC doing security stuff. So yeah, I, got, I got a pretty good background in security and emergency management stuff. So uh, that, that's why, you know, I, I think I can talk about this stuff. All right, now get to the trip wires. Okay. The first thing it says, uh, if a pandemic occurs, rural area safety security concerns. All right, we're in the pan it's been declared. Pandemic is just a word saying, okay, the, uh, uh, a contagion has spread, you know, to multiple countries. So yeah, we, we've been there for a while. Hey, you know, thanks to WHO for finally telling it, finally admitting it. I understand why they didn't try to, you know, manage the, the public expectations. So, but it's just a word. All right, signs of possible trouble. Uh, we're gonna be looking at, like I said, if you're like me, rural, we're looking keying on what's going on in the urban areas. All right, if things are starting to happen in the urban areas, uh, you're gonna want to uh, pay attention to that. Hospitals become overran. If there's riots, things going on there. Oh, there's Tank, Let's see if I can get him back there. And a little black dot on that rock back there. He's back there hunting, so we'll, we'll move on down here so not to disturb his hunting for the day. He, he likes squirrels and rabbits are his favorite. Okay, um, hospitals become overwhelmed in the larger cities. You're going to want to pay attention to that because out here where we are, uh, the hospitals are much smaller, and so it doesn't take much for them to get overwhelmed. Um, Walmart grocery store shelves are emptied or sparse. Uh, I was just down uh, today just topping off the last few little items for us, uh, just a little nitinoid stuff, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's type items, and I just cruised down the rice and bean aisle, empty. So. Yeah, we're, we're, at, we're at that point already, uh, so it really means you need to lock down your food stores now if you haven't already done so. Do what you can, get, get what you can, stock up on that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on here in a second. Okay, crime increase out here for rural areas. Uh, you're, we're going to be looking at what's going on in the... Um, I got a message. Oh, there we go. It just disappeared. had a message pop up on my screen. All right, we're going to be 
considering for us, uh, if you're looking at the um, subdivisions for our area, you know that they, in some of the smaller towns that are closer to us, if the subdivisions are there, uh, they start seeing crime. Or the crime out here in the rural areas, uh, if the farmers are starting to see some of their livestock disappear or crops or things like that. So theft on the farms. Here again, we, we talk to the neighbors and we just try to keep an uh, eye and a, and a feel for what's going on around us. So that's one of the things you're going to be looking for. All right, like I said, I already talked about the home invasions and the subdivisions. Um, robbery at grocery stores, people are actually stealing the food or you know, people getting food stolen from them in their residences. So food's going to become a, a very high commodity here soon. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of things. You know, um, pe people are trying to catch up that haven't done any uh, preparedness stuff. So now they're trying to play and catch up and supplies are just limited. So prices are gonna be going up. That's supply and demand thing. Okay, violent protests in the larger cities. Um, if you're seeing, you're, it's, gonna, it's gonna happen in the population centers. If a lot of these things that happen first, uh, violence or uh, unrest, it's going to happen there. Then it will slowly spread its way out here to the rural area. Like people like us, you know, you have a uh, something that looks like this. You know, in your background, that's something to be worried. You know, you, this is when you, when you have this type of background. That's when you're looking at these areas I'm talking about. Okay, uh, ATMs, banks running low on cash. All right, if you have that uh, going on, then. Um, yeah, that, that's something to be watching for if you're, your availability to get cash right now. So Italy, they're um, restricting access only to people for banks and grocery stores right now. They locked the whole country down. Israel's in, in intense going into lockdown because now you, before you come into the country, you got a 14-day quarantine. So they're, they're all intents and purposes. They, they've sealed their borders too. All right, uh, ATMs, are, well, we already talked about that one. All right, if people start talking about uh, martial law, right now they're doing... Uh, their uh, mayors and governors have declared emergency. That's so they get access to federal funds. Uh, they've deployed the National Guard up in New York to do some decontamination stuff. But if that kind of evolves into, they start talking about, uh, you know, curfews and cur come curfews first and the martial law thing. So if those words start getting thrown about and you're hearing that being considered, so yeah, that's something that's all right to throw up uh, your warning signals that all right, you need to start uh, taking actions or whatever your actions are from your group or wherever you are. Like I said, these are tripwires, things you look at for you to start making hard decisions for you and yours. Okay, if there's a, people start talking about they, they're losing confidence in uh, the local, state, or federal government. So, you know, the, the government folks we elect them are supposed to represent us. And this would come, people are getting fed up with the elected officials. They're, they're, they're not doing the things we want them to do. They're not representing us. So um, that's when, that's where the loss of confidence and trust, when they say, all right, these folks aren't doing what we want them. And so at that point, uh, that, that could turn into riots if, uh, you know, if, the, if the folks in the, that have been elected to office aren't doing the things we've asked them to do for us. Okay, uh, consider now, you want to start as much food as you can. Uh, CDC said a couple of weeks. We, we like to see six to 12 months, but uh, right now I understand if you don't have anything, you may not be able to do that. So get what you can while you can. Uh, realizing the price may go up a little bit, so uh, just shop wisely on that one. Ability to obtain water independent of the power grid. Uh, up here where there's streams and um, springs, most of us are on wells, so you have multiple power sources, multiple pumps, being it have means to purify your water. Uh, you know, like we talked about that in one, uh, calcium hypochlorate shock. Uh, you can get some um, tablets on Amazon. Uh, I think I haven't checked out. They may still be available. I don't know. The little quarter inch diameter pellets, one pellet to treat 25 gallons of water. Uh, you can get, there's several different ways you can get that. You can get filters, you know, the Berkey, Katanas, purification tablets, iodine, stuff like that. All right. Uh, establish trusted circle, friends and family. If you haven't already got your group, you know, get one going now. People are probably very interested in forming groups. They haven't gotten into something now just because, you know, people, you know, I, I can feel it here locally. And that's one thing. It's, you're just going to have to go with the feel of the area. Once people start getting a little tense, and, I, and I'm seeing it here already, uh, people are they're, they're just anxious because so things that are happening have never happened before. So people get kind of angry with the unknown. Uh, 
a, a couple of weeks from now, people won't think anything about this, but uh, right now, you know, people under stress do some strange things, so just be, be watching for that. All right. Um, you want to consider with your friends, family, do you or do you not start uh, coming into one place that way you have multiple people to help uh, with food, care for people, security? So what we call it consolidating in one location. Do you want to do that? Do you want to consider doing that? So uh, something to think about. Okay, safety. Like I said, uh, I'm in the security business, so uh, we take this kind of seriously. Um, so here's this, the this is the precursor social arrest is occurring. So what you would do is basically you want to stay at your homestead, farm, house, wherever you are, wherever your location is, you stay there. You don't leave unless you just absolutely have to. It's, you know, it's mission essential that you leave, whatever, you know, you had to come up with those criteria. All right, if you have to go somewhere, you plan your trips. Times out, times back, time on scene. And then what a little bit of allowances for something to go wrong, but something always goes wrong. Uh, th th those times are important so that uh, once you exceed your time that they start considering sending people to look for you. All right, uh, having go out in groups. Um, you, like I said, you plan your trips. Uh, it's more and also planning what you're taking with you, what supplies you're taking. You might want to take enough supplies in case you get called out there, you have a flat tire or something, but you have to spend the night. And then you worry about getting back. So now it's, where it's good to have radio. If you don't have radio comms, you know how you communicate that back to your group. Without radio, that, that's going to be a problem for you. I don't know how you're going to solve that one, unfortunately, given right now, in the, in the, I think, you know, access to radio is maybe getting kind of tight, so uh, you'll have to come up with a plan for that one. A security while you're out. Uh, here again, this is some pretty high-end specialized training. Uh, if you're moving in a group, uh, now here again, we're premised on social unrest, so it's bad times around. So if you're going somewhere, chances are everybody in the car that has a weapon is going to be armed. So um, what people do in a vehicle with weapons in a certain times like this. Uh, that, that's some specialized high-end training, so you need to consider that stuff if you can't get the training. Uh, you know, do some research, talk to people that have been in the military that have had this type of training, get some ideas on what they should be doing because everybody in that vehicle should have a specific job if you encounter trouble. If the vehicle becomes disabled, everybody has a specific job, and they should be knowing where their job is on how you get out of the area. There, there are ways you can do that. All right, uh, consider 24-7 security at your house, location, whatever it is. Uh, you got everybody's got to get sleep. You can't be up 24-7. I mean, you may be bad to the bone, a tier one operating dude, but uh, even those guys, 72 hours, you're going to be going down. I, I know some of the training I went through in the military at about 72 hours, uh, you start getting real goofy and loopy. And so, yeah, you start making bad decisions. That's what it comes down to. So, yeah, you, you got to get some sleep. So, uh, you know, uh, you can train as much as you want, but you've got to have rest. You've got to regenerate the body. Okay, be prepared to deal with strangers. Okay, somebody comes up to your area. You need to uh, have pre-planned responses on what you're going to say to them, how you're going to deal with them. So uh, something to think about there, guys. How would you do that? Um, you tell them, hey, I can't help you. There are issues to go with that. Uh, if you tell them you can't help them, there's issues. So uh, you need to have that planned out, how you're going to deal with that. I uh, see Tank found me. Uh, one more shot of Tank the Tomcat coming in here. There he is. Where's Tank? There's, oh, he went behind the pallet. Yeah, Tank, I know it. It's important to have proper supervision when you're out here working. <laughs> so yeah, if you got a Tank the Tomcat or something like that on your area, yeah, then you, you know what I'm talking about. So. All right, that's all I got for right now. Uh, I'm going to put this up on YouTube and uh, Facebook. We got a lot of exposure with Facebook on this last one. So, um, yeah, please share this. If they got any questions, have them comment, ask questions. We'll do what we can. I, I was communicating with a lady today. She said she was up in D.C. She had some concerns. A lot of people were being smart alecky. I gave her from some suggestions. I told her, hey, I'm a security guy, so I gave her some security stuff, things to think about, things she should take. On, she was very appreciative, so uh, hey, we'll, I'll do what I can for you on quick comments. Um, so uh, any questions, please reach out to us. Thanks a lot.